Hey guys, this is Amber. I am so excited that you guys were able to join us. Tonight is going to be a super fun webinar, and I know sometimes when we're talking about taxes, it can be kind of a boring subject, but this is not boring because it's about saving you money, <laughs> and that is totally not boring. And I have TaxBot. Um, they agreed to do this for me, and they're doing it for free. They're giving this you this information for free, so I'm really excited about that. I actually am a customer of TaxBot. I use it. I love it. It saved me this tax season. <laughs> no more receipts lost to get cluttered. I mean, I can just do my mileage right from the app. It is absolutely amazing. I have enough headaches in my business. I don't need tax time to be another headache. So I let TaxBot. It's kind of like my personal assistant for taxes. <laughs> but anyways, um, I'm going to introduce you to Sandy. Sandy is a professional over at TaxBot. He is a, well, he'll tell you a little bit about himself, but I'll, I'll plug him too. <laughs> he knows his things about taxes, guys. He was a former IRS agent, I believe, um, and he, he's awesome. He's taught me so much. So I'm going to give it away and let, let him take over and teach you all about how to save some more money. Well, thank you, Amber. Did you tell me, Amber, that you, that you that TaxBot generated, I couldn't believe the number, 350,000 in deductions? Was that, was that correct? That's correct. I did a lot of traveling this year. Jeez, <laughs> unbelievable. Anyway, hello, everybody. I have to tell you how honored I am to be here. I'm very honored to be part of Amber's group and with Unique. And I'm also very honored to be speaking to you, self-employed individuals. I mean, heck, my parents were self-employed. I'm self-employed. So I really respect anybody who is willing to take a little more risk in order to make a lot more money. Now, I'm going to be going through this material very quickly. This is sort of a 30,000 foot overview of what's in my videos and blogs and books and so on. So you're going to want to get some paper, you want to get some pen, because we are going to move. Now the good news in addition to this is this is being recorded. That's the good news. And you will get a copy of the recording, so be aware of that. Uh, in addition, I will finish this in about oh, I guess about 40 minutes, and then we're going to take time for questions. We'll take about 10 minutes for questions, and we will finish at 9, uh, well, it'll be 10 o'clock Eastern time, so be aware of that. So if you have any questions, put them down, and we'll get it at the end. Okay. It, uh, you, you know, it's interesting. Most people don't realize this, and I, by the way, I'm going to be saying some shocking things I think you're going to find very surprising. Here's one of the first things. When you think about what you spend on various expenses, most people don't realize that they spend more on taxes than they do on food, housing, uh, transportation, and clothing combined. Absolutely combined. You know, I'll give you a good story. I had a, I don't know if you've had an overcharge on a credit card or, or you know, charge for something you didn't actually pay. Well, I was uh, went out to dinner with my wife in Italy when we took, went on vacation, and I got, I got charged for the bill on my credit card, except I got charged twice. I was irate. I mean, I spent hours on the phone fighting with that credit card company to immediately reduce the charge. Now, my question to you is, what did you do? Did you just let it go, or did you did you you know get a, get ticked off like me and fight with it? Now, I'm, if you, I want you to hold on to that feeling, because I'm about to make it a lot worse. What if I were to tell you you're overpaying your taxes to the tune of thousands, literally? And I'm going to prove it to you. Would you like to know about it? Of course you would. You know, there was a study done by Harvard. Here's another interesting statistic. And I think it was Harvard. And the study was how many people can retire at age 66, which is when baby boomers can start receiving Social Security, at age 66 and have the same standard of living they had before retirement. The answer was shocking. The answer was 4%, which means 96% of all of you, if you do nothing, will either have to continue working, live on some form of charity, or reduce their standard of living. Now here's my point. If taxes are the number one expense in this country and you can reduce them legally, you think maybe we can cure those retirement woes? That's the point. You know, what's interesting is that you know, we have good tax laws for business. In fact, we have two tax systems in this country. And when I say that, most people think, oh sure, one for rich and one for poor. And that is not correct. It's close. There's one to make you rich and there's one to make you poor. The one designed to make you poor is the one designed for employees and for those of you who don't know the rules. Because if you don't know the rules, you're in as bad shape as, as the employee. Because if you're an employee, you're taxed on dollar one. You don't get that many deductions, contrary to what you may think you may get. And if you do get an employee business expense, it's got to exceed a threshold. But if you're self-employed, which most of you are, 
That's the one to make you rich. If you know the rules, you can write off part of your house, your spouse, the equivalent of your kids' education and weddings. I'm not exaggerating, by the way, when I say that. You can set up a pension plan that I promise you makes any government plan look small by comparison. The tax benefits of being in business are enormous. And you might wonder, well, why does the government pass good tax laws for business? And the answer is very simple. Over 70% of the job growth is from small business. For example, uh, Apple Computer didn't start with 200,000 employees. It started out of Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs' garage. That's true. Look it up. Um, Amazon, the big internet giant, that didn't start big. They started out of Jeff Bezos' garage. So the government passes good tax laws that will effectively generate deductions, which in effect create cash that you never have to pay back. And that's what a deduction is. It's cash that you never have to pay back. And let me give you a good example of this. Uh, Mary is an employee, or she could be self-employed who doesn't know the rules. Same problem. And she has the following expenses. Cell phone, which is normally not deductible as an employee. She has mortgage interest, which is deductible, but only as an itemized deduction. Rent, that wouldn't be deductible at all, whether you're as an employee. Car expense, she has to drive to work. She spends money on gas, repairs, insurance, not deductible. Mary likes to eat out a lot. Unfortunately, not, it's not deductible as an employee. She entertains a lot. She likes to have fun, go to movies, play golf, things like that. Not deductible. Mary has medical expenses, which normally have to exceed a threshold, which is 10% of adjusted gross earnings this year. And any other expenses that she may have as an employee can only be deducted if they exceed a certain threshold. But here's my point. By being an a self-employed individual and knowing the rules, now portions of these exact same expenses may become deductible. So this is money you're already spending. Let me make that very clear. But now you can take a deduction for a lot of these things if you do it correctly. I've coined the term for this. I call this redirected taxes, which means you're deducting things you weren't able to deduct before because you're an employee. In fact, here's another shocking thing. And based on the 30 years of experience of lecturing that I've been doing, I find that small business owners are overpaying their taxes to the tune of billions. And I'm not the only one who noticed this. John Potter, who's the head of the American Institute of CPA, said that Americans are overpaying the taxes by billions. Now, why are they overpaying? And by the way, here's another important thing. 95% of everybody who, heard, who hears me say this, 95% of all the people I lecture to don't think they overpay. Now, why is that? There's essentially three reasons. First reason is lack of knowledge. You don't know what you don't know. Okay? That makes sense. The second reason, which is really not a good excuse, but it's a big, big reason, and that's procrastination. You know, let me ask you a question. If you don't set your alarm to wake up in the morning or to come to the seminar or any other, else, any other appointment, what happens? You might forget about it. Same thing is true with taxes. If you don't have something triggering you to write down your mileage, your entertainment and travel questions that I'm going to get into today and some other things, What's going to happen? You're going to forget, and then you end up losing the deductions, or you don't have the right documentation, which is even worse. You can be hit with big penalties. So that's the second reason, procrastination. It's a huge killer. And the third reason is fear of the IRS. I can't tell you how many people I meet who say, oh, I don't want to take these deductions. I'll make it audited. And you know what the sad part is? Taking less deductions does not reduce your chance of an audit. Isn't that funny? But it's true. There's a couple of cash drain myths. I've already covered one, that if you take the deductions, that, that automatically, or don't take deductions, that reduces your chance of an audit. But there's a second cash drain myth that's probably the biggest one of them all. It's only seven words long. And yet those seven words cost more people to lose money than any single mistake I know of. And those seven words are, my accountant takes care of my taxes. And by the way, I have a similar myth. My spouse takes care of my taxes. If you learn anything, learn this. I equate this with a doctor taking care of our body. Now, doctors are important, but the problem is if you, if you eat all the cholesterol and all the fattening foods and you don't do any exercise, there's only so much a doctor can do for you. It would be nice if they can give us a nice rotor rooter job, but you know, there's only so much they can do. Accountants are the same way. If you, if you don't have the right documentation, see, to me, accountants are absolutely essential. I don't even know why anybody does their own tax return. It's really ridiculous. But if you don't have the right documentation, if you don't know, if you don't have the tax planning in place, there's only so much your accountant can do for you. Does that make sense? It's got to be a partnership effort. Now, here's another huge myth. I, you, some of you may have seen me lecturing in some of these big mega events with Donald Trump and General Schwarzkopf when he was alive and Tony Robbins and a bunch of others. And I had somebody come up to me and said, Mr. Botkin, I loved your program. There's only one problem. I don't pay taxes. In fact, I get a refund every year. Couldn't believe he actually said that to me. And he wasn't even getting back. He didn't realize he was getting back his own money, by the way. And he wasn't even getting it all back. 
here's a good example. Somebody who makes $50,000 a year of net taxable income, that's net of all your deductions, exemptions, everything, okay, pays roughly in an average tax state, and I happen to be using Arizona or Minnesota, but I'm, I'm just, I didn't pick California or New York because that would be even higher, but this is an average tax state, would pay $12,917 in taxes, and that's federal, state, Social Security, and Medicare. Now, withholding or estimated tax is normally more, and you might wonder, well, why is that? Well, for two reasons. One, the government wants to make sure they get their money. That's one good reason. But the second reason is, if you get a refund, don't you feel better? Of course you do. So even though this person is getting a $1,568 refund, they're not getting it all back. They're still leaving $12,917 with the government, federal and state. This translates to 25.8% of their net taxable income is being paid in taxes. And by the way, I'm not talking about Donald Trump here. I'm talking about a hardworking single individual netting out $50,000 a year. Someone who makes $100,000 a year of net taxable income pays a whopping 32.4% of what they make in taxes. And somebody who makes $250,000 a year pays 37.7% of what they make in taxes. So you're paying a lot in taxes. You may not realize it, but I promise you, you are. Now, here's another interesting myth. What if I have a home-based business, Sandy? Uh, what kind of deductions can I give myself, or, or I don't get for that matter, that maybe a Fortune 500 company gets or a big brick and mortar company gets? And here's the interesting thing. You get exactly the same tax advantages that a Fortune 500 company can give their employees, believe it or not. You can. You know, I have a book called, and I'll mention a little bit of background about me, called Lower Your Taxes Big Time. It was a best-selling book, and I recommend that to everyone. In fact, there's one chapter there called Why You Be Brain Dead, Not to Have a Home-Based Business You Can Use in Recruiting. But the bottom line is, if you there's 137 pages in that book on fringe benefits. Almost every single one applies to you as a, as a home-based business owner, believe it or not. Here's another big myth. What if I work my business part-time, not full-time? What kind of deductions did I get? Answer, you get the exact same deductions that a full-time person gets. It doesn't matter. Now, here's a myth, and I don't know where this one started. This one's huge. Hey, Sandy, I just joined my unique business this year, or it's my second year, and I'm not making any money yet. Okay, can I take, what kind of deductions can I get? The government, I'm going to say something that's going to sound kind of funny. The government is the biggest bookie in North America because they subsidize you in three ways. The first way they subsidize you, remember, they want you to win. They want you to win. They want your business to succeed. So the way they subsidize you is if your business generates a loss, that loss can be used against any form of income you have. Interest, dividends, wages, rents, anything, the job earnings. So let's take an example. Let's say that you or your spouse makes $50,000 a year in a job. Your unique business generates a $10,000 loss. You, can, you, get a, you only pay taxes on the net, which is $40,000. You net it out. Now, let's say that loss exceeds your whole income for the year. You're a single parent and it exceeds your whole income. Here's the second way they subsidize you. You can carry back all excess losses that you couldn't use this year, two years, and actually get a refund from the federal and, in most cases, state government for the last two years of taxes that you pay. You actually get a check, believe it or not. And let's say your loss exceeds your all the income for the last two years. You wipe out all the taxes you paid. You then can carry forward, here's the third way they subsidize you, all business losses 20 years. Think of that. And offset the next 20 years of earnings. So you never lose a properly documented business deduction. The only thing the government wants is that you document it correctly and, which we're going to get into what you need to do, and that you work your business like a business and not like a hobby, which means you trying to make money. This is not just a social thing. You're actually trying to make your business successful. And there are certain criteria that you want to get to, and I, and I have a whole video on this in TaxBot. If I have time, I'll, I'll mention it, some of it today. Now, this, this is something you need to be aware of. When you're self-employed, the government knows that there's a lot more to take advantage of, and not to mention the fact that there's no withholding, just estimated tax. So you have as much as a 700% more likely chance to be audited as a self-employed individual. And that's why having the right records is not just nice, it's a very critical thing to have. You know, I have found in my lectures there's a current tax dilemma. Most people are either not taking all the deductions that they should be taking, and I think you're going to learn that today. I'm going to be covering just a few things that I bet you're not doing. Or they're taking more in deductions, but they don't have the right documentation. And I would say this applies to well over 95% of everybody I speak to.
Now, what's my agenda? My agenda will be to give you some tax tips. That'll be probably the first 30 or 40 minutes. Talk about some compliance issues to be absolutely bulletproof from the government. How would you like that? We're going to show how uh, what, what Amber talked about, how TaxBot, which is an expense tracking application for your smartphone, can help you. We're then going to open this up for about 10 minutes for questions and answers where you can uh, get your question answered. So you want to make sure you put that in the chat box. Now, a little background about me, by the way. Uh, why I'm qualified to say what I'm going to say, because I'm going to be saying some surprising things I mentioned. First of all, I'm a CPA, I'm a tax attorney, and I'm a former trainer of IRS attorneys nationwide. So if you think of an IRS agent as a rat, I guess that makes me head rodent. I've been lecturing for the Tax Reduction Institute for over a quarter of a century on tax and financial matters. I'm a featured tax coach with Donald Trump at the Tony Robbins Wealth Seminar. Some of you may have seen me. I'm a best-selling author of actually two books. My first book is Lower Your Taxes Big Time, and that is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You can get Lower Your Taxes Big Time you know, all over. In addition, I have another book that's garnering some terrific reviews. It's not mentioned here, but it's called Achieve Financial Freedom Big Time. And I've been a guest tax expert on Fox, CNN, CBS, and so on. And I'm not saying this to impress you. I just want you to know that what I'm going to say, I know what I'm talking about. Now, here's what we're going to start in now. How would you like to get the equivalent of free gas? Would you like that? <laughs> Some of you may be saying, I already get that already. <laughs> but how would you like that? Get, your, get free gas for your car, I meant. <laughs> well, when you ride off your car, that's effectively what you're getting. Now, there are two methods of riding off a vehicle in the United States. One is the IRS method. The other is the actual method. We're going to start off with the IRS method, which is um, the more conservative approach. IRS this year, and, I'm, and this is all fully updated by the way, gives you 57 and a half cents a mile for every mile you drive for business. And by the way, how do, who has the burden of proof of showing how many miles you drive for business? Does the government or do we? And the answer is we do. And how do we prove it? From a tax tracker or tax organizer. So let's take an example on, on why this is important. Let's say you drive 20 miles for business tomorrow. IRS gives you 57 and a half cents a mile. So you would get an $11.50 deduction. Now, a deduction is kind of an indirect form of cash. In order to figure out how much cash you get from a deduction, you have to multiply it by whatever tax bracket you're in. And by the way, a little bit of information about tax bracket. What is that? Is that, the, is that the average of what you pay overall? What does that mean? Tax bracket doesn't mean the average. What it means is what you pay on the last dollar you make to the federal and state government. And if you get a deduction, it's how much of that deduction you get back as a refund. In fact, we always want deductions. And there's an old song that we CPA sing when we work. You don't want to hear me sing, Amber, but the words are great. Everything is cheaper if you get a deduction. Cha-cha-cha. <laughs> so uh, let's say uh, the average American is in the 33% tax bracket. When you consider federal, state, Social Security, and Medicare, that's about right. It could be as high as 54%. For somebody like Amber, it's probably 54%. But the average is 33%. So let's assume you're in the 33% tax bracket. You multiply that by the $11.50 deduction. That gives you a $3.80 cash savings. This is in your pocket on that 20 miles of driving. Now, why is that important? Let's say gas is $2.50 a gallon, which is about what it is right now, maybe a little less actually, and you get 20 miles to the gallon. Not only is gas free, but you're actually making $1.30 a gallon. Everybody see this? This is what happens when you get to ride off your car. And by the way, if you don't have the right documentation, if you don't have a good tracker, this is what it's costing you. So instead of making $3.80 a day, you're losing $3.80 a day. So what is that? Uh, let's say 30 days a month. That's about um, it's about a little under four, about $120 a month. So it, it goes against you if you don't have the right documentation. And that's the IRS method, which is the more conservative approach. The actual method is in lieu of the IRS method. Now, what is the actual method? You take your business mileage and divide, and divide it by your total mileage, and that's the percentage of car you write off. That's the percentage of gas, oil, repairs, insurance, wash, wax, depreciation, and so on. Now, what kinds of documentation do you need to write off your car? You need four things. Number one, you need an odometer log showing the beginning and end years odometer reading. Number two, you need a mileage journal showing what your mileage is for each stop you make during the day. And the address of your of your stop. You can put this in, a, in an appointment book, but you got to have the address somewhere. And finally, an explanation of the business purpose. In other words, why did you drive there? What was the name of the person you met? Why did you drive there? What's an explanation? 
Did you was there an opportunity meeting? Did you go to meet a distributor? What's the reason? If you leave out any one of these, you're not compliant, and the IRS will hit you with significant penalties. By the way, here's a hot tip. You know, a lot of times we do personal stuff, like we take our kids tutoring, which is not deductible. We see our mom, not deductible. So the tip, there's an old saying in Washington, D.C., where I live, where there's a will, there's a lawyer. <laughs> so the point is, if you let's say you're going to see your mom. Now, that's normally not deductible. But if, let's say, on the way you're doing a business stop, maybe you're going to an opportunity meeting or see a potential prospect, and your mom is nearby, now a substantial part of that mileage could be deductible. And by the way, your mom doesn't have to live where you live. Let's say your mom happens to have a home in Florida or in Hawaii, and you're visiting your mom while you're meeting with potential distributors. You put ads in the paper, and you meet with potential distributors while you're visiting your mom. If you do it right, a, a substantial part of that trip is deductible, including the airfare. Okay? Now... A little bit about trucks and, and cars. This year, the most you can depreciate any vehicle, any vehicle used in business, is $3,160 in depreciation. You get a little more next year, but basically the maximum first year depreciation in 2015 is $3,160. However, there are two big winners that are accepted from this. If you buy a new or used qualifying truck or a new or used qualifying sports utility vehicle, instead of limiting your depreciation to $3,160, you can get up to $25,000 in depreciation. And that's in addition to regular depreciation. You actually take an expense deduction of $25,000 and you get a regular depreciation. So let's take an example. Let's say I buy a, a $60,000 Cadillac Escalade, who happens to meet the rules. I use it 90% for business, or $54,000. I can elect to write off 25 of it this year, plus I can depreciate the remaining, uh, what is that, 29000 over the next six years, which this being one of the six years. So what's a qualifying truck or SUV? Well, it could be new or used. It doesn't matter whether you pay cash or finance it. But it has to be a truck chassis, so they both have to have truck chassis, and they both have to have a gross vehicle weight, which means carrying weight, of over 6,000 pounds. And by the way, how do you know if your truck or SUV has a gross vehicle weight of over 6,000 pounds? You look, open up the driver's side of the door, and the door jam is a metal plate showing gross and net vehicle weight. If the gross vehicle weight is over 6,000 pounds and you have a truck chassis, you now can elect to write off $25,000. Now, in addition... Let's talk about entertainment. IRS allows you to deduct 50% of your meals and 50% of your friend's meal for uh, anyone who's a potential prospect in your business. So my question is, who are your potential clients? Are your adult friends uh, potential prospects in your business? Of course. Can they give you referrals? Absolutely. How about your next door neighbor? Absolutely. How about your adult family members? Absolutely. In fact, I've never met two home-based business people get together and not talk business. So virtually almost everyone is a prospect. So here's my point. If almost everyone is a prospect and you have a meal with someone, how can you ever have a non-deductible meal with someone? You can't. And if you're, if you're, if you're uh, talking business at the table and you're, you're not deducting it, you're leaving money on that table, you are overpaying your taxes. And you don't have to pay for them. You can deduct just your share if you want. And as I said, if you're not taking that deduction, you're overpaying your taxes. Did your accountant tell you that? Now, to write off your meals and entertainment, by the way, who has the burden of showing that we talk business? Is it, does the IRS have that burden or do we? And the answer is we do. And how do we prove it? From our tax tracker or tax organizer. Is everybody getting the drift here? Now, what you need to write off, you need to have something triggering you to write the, what I call the four W's and an H. Now, what are these? Who? What's their name? What was discussed? I asked for referrals. I talked about a specific product. I talked about the income opportunity. Where? I went to Chili Steakhouse or I entertained at home. When? What was the date? And how much? By doing this, you are bulletproof. And you will never have to worry about an IRS audit again. How will that feel to never have to worry? Now, I've seen too many people have business shut down because of all the money they owed. This is a way of keeping the government off your back. Now, I want to mention something about entertainment. You know, many of you see entertain people advertising on the Super Bowl and World Series. Like, you don't do that. I mean, that's, that's big business. But small business uses viral marketing. Your form of advertising is entertaining. That's the way you advertise. So the government is encouraging you to deduct your entertainment because, number one, you do two things. One, you're promoting your business in pursuit of a profit. And number two, you're offering proof that you are running your business like a business. That's one of the factors. So entertainment is certainly encouraged by the Internal Revenue Code. 
Now, what you can deduct, by the way, there's something called associated entertainment. I'll bet you never got a letter from your accountant telling you what that is. I want you to write down the word, if you have a pen and paper, associated entertainment, put an equal sign, and write down the word fun. Fun. This is where you're going to a movie. This is where you're going to a play, a, a soccer game, a, a, a hockey game, playing golf. Golf's an expensive sport. So if you could write it off, you're having twice as much fun, <laughs> right? Remember, everything is cheaper if you get a deduction. Cha-cha-cha. Now, what you can write off is 50% of your meal as well as 50% of your friend's meal if, and this is not Sandy Botkin talking, this is IRS talking, if you talk business within the same 24-hour day as the fun. Does that give you enough time? <laughs> so let's take an example. So again, you've got to have something triggering you to talk business and to write it down. So let's take uh, an example. Let's say I would go to uh, Amber's home. I talk business and I say, Amber, what do you say we go out to a, a um, she's over, lives in Minnesota. So like, what do you say we go to an indoor basketball game? And she goes, okay. And so we go there. If, if, that, if I talk business in her home and then we drive to a basketball game where I pay for the tickets, is that deductible? Yes. And I, what, I, what you can deduct is 50%, by the way, just so you know what it is. It's not 100%, it's 50%. 50% of what I pay for myself and 50% of what I pay for Amber if I pay for her. Now. That's let's 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 say that I'm I'm talking business at a restaurant and it's a nice day. It's we're here in Florida where I am right now. And I say, Amber, it's such a beautiful day. We say we go out to play golf. And she says, Well, you show me how to play. I'll go with you. She might have a 300 handicap, but she'll go. Is that talking business within the same day? In other words, we talk business over lunch and then we play golf. Yes. Who has the burden of proof of showing that we talk business within the same day? Does the government or do we? And the answer is we do. And how do we do it? Guess what? From our tax tracker or tax organizer. You know, all of you have homeowner's insurance. Why do you have that? Because if your house burns down or you have a tornado or a big problem and you don't have insurance, that's a disaster. All of you probably have car insurance. Why do you do that? You don't use that all the time. If you did, you'd be suspended. Because if you get into an accident, you don't have car insurance. That's a disaster. Well, your tax tracker is your audit insurance against the government. It keeps the government off your back. And unlike car insurance and unlike auto insurance, you can use it every single year and it pays you very, very well and you'll never get suspended. And by the way, when I was on the radio, I had somebody call me up and they said, Mr. Botkin, you need to tell me that the government will believe everything I say in my tax tracker? Yes. By regulation, they must accept everything you say in your tax tracker unless they can prove fraud. But I was assuming you're not doing that. I don't want you to do that. But assuming you're not doing that, Everything you put in there, they must accept. That is your audit insurance against IRS. Knowledge is the premium for the policy. Together, you'll never have to worry about an IRS audit again. Now, here's my point to you. Did you, did you ever get a letter from your accountant saying that you can write off 50% uh, of your fund and 50% of your friend's fund and know about the same 24-hour day documentation requirements? Does your accountant ever tell you that? I bet you not. You know, think about how good these tax laws were, and I said this at the beginning. You can eat away your taxes. You can play away your taxes. You can golf away your taxes. I mean, you can drink away your taxes. I mean, it's just, it, it, the tax laws are in, uh, fabulous. Now, what kinds of documentation do you need? Well, similar to other types of entertainment, you have to have something triggering you to write down the four W's and an H, which means you write down who, what, where, when, how much. Am I doing this? You'll never have to worry about an IRS audit again. How will that feel to not have to worry about an IRS or state audit? All right, now let's talk about a home office deduction. I will bet that you were told or you heard that if you claim a home office deduction, you're going to get audited. And frankly, it's not worth it anyway, right? I bet you heard that. Well, guess what? First of all, in 1999, Congress liberalized the home office rules for home-based businesses. Did you know that? Now, why would Congress do that if they didn't want you to take it? That's number one. The second shocking thing is I have a friend of mine who actually did a study. You know, I mean, you hear about all these myths. You never know whether they're true or not. So I, he actually did a study of people in his seminars, and he wanted to know how, what percentage, and I did the study too, what percentage of the people were audited who claimed the home office versus what percentage of people who didn't claim a home office who got audited. Guess what? It was almost the same percentage. So my point is this, if you're eligible for home office, which I bet most of you are, if, then you, and you don't take the deduction, you're crazy. You really are, because it is worth tens of thousands of dollars. Remember what I said at the beginning, you are overpaying your taxes, and you are. And the sad part is I'm only covering maybe 3% of what's available to you. Think about that. <laughs> now, how does a home office work? Let me give you a little overview. 
here's the floor plan of, of, a, of, a, of an apartment, and we're going to assume that you use that apartment one-eighth of the square footage for business. And by the way, there's nothing magical about one-eighth. You don't just automatically take one-eighth. This I'm just using this as an example. In your house, it could be a little more. It could be a little less. Maybe that one bedroom represents 8% or 10%. I'm just picking a number. Now, what does that mean, one-eighth is used for business? Well, that means that one-eighth of your home expenses become deductible. So, for example, one-eighth of utilities become deductible. You know, without a home office, you couldn't deduct those utilities, but you're paying for them anyway. This is an example of taking a deduction for things that you weren't able to claim before, even though you were paying for it. One-eighth of the interest now becomes business interest. You might say, well, why is that important? Can I deduct interest as an itemized deduction? Yes, but by claiming it a part of it as a business, you can save some Social Security and Medicare on your business. One-eighth of the taxes, property taxes, become business taxes, not just an itemized deduction. One-eighth of the house, if you own the home or the apartment, becomes depreciable, and that could be worth tens of thousands of dollars. Now, I had a number of people who always ask this question, and they say, Mr. Botkin, what if I'm renting an apartment or a house? Can I, will a home office deduction still benefit me? Yes. One-eighth of the rent could be deductible. One-eighth of the maid service. One-eighth of the alarm service. I'm not done. One-eighth of the insurance. One-eighth of the repairs. One-eighth of the snow removal, <laughs> since Amber lives in uh, Minnesota. One-eighth of the um, uh, of, of lawn care could be deductible. I mean, we're talking about a lot of money here. This is not a small number. Now, what do we need to do to qualify for home office deduction? You've got to meet three rules. How many? Three. First rule is you've got to use an exclusive portion of a room for business. It doesn't have to be a whole room. It could be a whole room if you want it. But it has to have a separate identifiable area. Now, the problem is this. How do you prove two years from now that you, claim you used a room exclusively for business? You have that burden of proof, don't you? So how do you prove that? I bet your accountant never told you. Well, here's the answer. Take a picture of the home office. Date the photograph, but do not send it in with your tax return. Keep it in case you get audited. Okay? And do that every single year. You can do it on your iPhone. It'll automatically date it. Secondly, you want to show that you use your home regularly for your uh, young living, your your um, uh, your business. So you want 45 minutes a day, four to five days per week. That's a minimum. Now, it could be more than 45 minutes a day, but you, at least 45 minutes a day, four to five days a week. And most importantly, or as importantly, you want to use your business as your principal place of business. Now, what does that mean? That means you don't have another office where you do administrative work and you do the majority of your management or administrative work for unique business from this office. So that means you do the paperwork from your home office, which I bet most of you uh, will meet. So again, exclusive portion of a room for business, at least 45 minutes a day, four to five days a week for some business. It could be your unique business, it could be a rental property business, but some business, and you don't you do all your administrative work for that business at a set spot of your home. And if you meet those rules, you will be able to write off thousands and thousands. Now here's another interesting thing. This is something I've used. You know, a lot of times people ask me, can I deduct my kids' college education? And the answer is no. Well, how about their wedding costs? No. How about a car for my kids? No. How about a video games that they're buying all the time with these, uh, with these win, with these, uh, I don't know what you call that, the Nintendo games? No. How would you like to be able to deduct the equivalent of every single thing I just said if blessed by the government? Would you like that? Here's my point. Tuition, college education, room and board, not deductible. Weddings, not deductible. But if you were to hire your kids in your unique business and pay them a reasonable wage, are wages that you pay an assistant in business deductible, as long as it's reasonable? Yes. And if they use that money to pay for their own college down the road, their own wedding down the road, their own room and board, their own car, are you in essence getting a deduction for those things? It's the same money. But in one case, you're taking a deduction as wages. With, whereas tuition is not deductible per se, same money. And my and my family is a good example. You know, if you know what I do in my life, you can save a lot of money. I hired my kids to work in my, sometimes in my business, sometimes to work in the summer to, on my rental properties. I was able to pay them thousands over the years. My daughter majored in, in digital design, which is kind of like web design with a little animation. I hired her to do my website. I was I got a quote from an external firm to find out what you know what they would charge, which is a pretty high quote, and I paid my daughter something less. She was able to use that money to pay for the equivalent of two years, over two years, about two and a half years, of college tuition. Okay? 
and that saved me thousands. If you're not hiring your kids, you are overpaying your taxes. Now, in addition, when you hire your kids, you know, if you hire me, IRS couldn't care less. If you hire your kids or your spouse, now they care. See, because now you're dealing with family members. So you want to pay a reasonable wage. Can't you, for example, you're not going to be able to pay your kid uh, $50,000 if they're only working for you three hours a week and filing. It's not going to happen. You want to keep timesheets to show what they're doing and how many hours they're working per week. Your, and your tax uh, tracker can do that. Also, the first $6,300 they earn is income tax-free, by the way. Why? Because they get a standard deduction on their own tax return of $6,300. So you get a deduction, and they get that money tax-free. And by the way, that's in addition to claiming there's an exemption. That's all in addition. I said they're a good tax loss. I wasn't kidding. And if you're self-employed and the kids are under 18, they're exempt from Social Security and federal unemployment tax. You don't even have to pay that. You know, a lot of people think, well, what about credit cards? Right, isn't that enough? IRS agents love people who think credit cards are good enough. Well, think again, because you need more information than the credit card provides. You've got to have a tax tracker. You know, in tax law, now this is something that's very important, you are guilty until proven innocent. You have to prove all your deductions were business-related and that you're following the rules. You know, mostly, I want to mention, a lot of times people think, well, what about Quicken and, and uh, things like that? And QuickBooks, isn't that good enough? The problem is most accounting systems are good for telling you where you spent your money, but they are not good. They don't even hold water when it comes to proving tax compliance. I mean, when do you get your deductions? When you're at home typing everything into the computer or when you're out and about seeing uh, prospective prospects for your unique business? And the answer is when you're out and about, you need to have something triggering you for your mileage. You need to have something triggering you for all the elements of, ta of entertainment, for travel, and so on. An accounting system doesn't do that. So this is an addition to what to uh, like QuickBooks or something like that. Wouldn't it be great if you could have a personal tax assistant to do all of this for you, keep your mileage logs for you, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, keep all your receipts in so safe that even if you have a flood you'll, or a tornado, you'll never lose those receipts, and to keep your tax diary for you and all your entertainment questions for you, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Wouldn't that be great? The problem is if you hired somebody to do that and you pay a minimum wage, it's probably expensive. What if you can get somebody to do that for you for pennies a day? Not pennies an hour, pennies a day. Would that be worth it to you? Of course. If you don't think that's worth it, something's wrong. Well, let me introduce you to, I think, the best personal tax assistant you will ever meet. It is called TaxBot. It's a cute little creature. It has a four and a half star rating in the App Store by consumers who are using it. TaxBot has a number of very interesting things. First of all, it has an integrated mileage tracker with a GPS system. So instead of keeping these mileage logs, this is fabulous. And there are three ways to track your mileage with TaxBot. The first way is what I call the manual method. And this is actually much easier than putting it on paper. What you do is you actually turn on TaxBot. You say, start mileage tracking. What happens is TaxBot will follow you along, a little pin, and where you went. The minute you get to your location, whether it's an opportunity meeting or a prospect you click on, stop mileage tracking. What TaxBot will show will be the beginning address of your where you started it, the ending address of where you ended it. It'll put the mileage down. It'll put the date down. And the only thing you have to write down is the reason. You then click save. It will summarize all of those mileage between business and personal mileage and give you a report as to what the percentage is. I mean, you can't get easier than that. And that's our called the mileage, that's the manual method. The second method, which will be available in about two weeks, is called the automatic tracking method. See, with the manual method, you have to remember to turn on tax spot and then turn it off. And if you don't turn it off, it uses up a lot of juice. Well, a lot of people forget to turn it on. So with the automatic method, which is coming out, as I said, in a couple weeks, tax spot will turn on automatically whenever you start moving on your car. You go over five miles an hour, tax spot turns on. Now, the minute you stop your car for more than five minutes, TaxBot turns off and will automatically record all the things I mentioned in the manual method. It will record the beginning address, the ending address, the date, the mileage. All you write down is the reason. Click Save as business or Save as personal. You have that choice. And now you, you, it will automatically compute your business versus personal mileage. And that's called the automatic method. And that will be available within the next couple of weeks. Third method is what happens if for some reason you didn't, you didn't you bring your phone with you, your phone didn't work, whatever it is, and you forgot to track a trip. And here's method number three. 
you enter the address into TaxBot. You go on the web and you enter the address, where you, where you started and where you ended. TaxBot will recreate the trip for you, actually produce the route that you took. You can even, if you didn't take that route, you can modify it with your mouse and it will recompute the route for you. It will give you uh, everything you want, the mileage, everything. That's called the reconstruction method, one of my favorite methods for a lot of people. Now, in addition, TaxBot will also digitally store your receipts. So if you lose your phone, you don't lose your data. That's the important point. And it's stored in several different locations in several different cities. And we take this very seriously. Now, the third thing TaxBot does, it has an expense tracker. So you can, you can track your expenses very easily. By the way, I want to mention something about TaxBot. We have two buttons, Tr add trip, add expense. That's it. You know, I designed TaxBot for me. You know, I hate documenting. I, I don't know about you, but I hate it. But one thing I've learned, if it's simple, easy, and fast, I'll do it. And so will most people. I designed it for me. Two buttons is about as, about as easy as it gets. So let's take an example. Let's say I'm going to have a meal with Amber. And we want to talk about some tax planning for her unique business. I click on Add Expense, and you'll get a whole category of expenses, by the way, all of which are, ed are editable and customizable. So if it, one category isn't there, you can add it. Okay? By doing this, by adding expense, all the tax questions will pop up on your smartphone. By the way, TaxBot works on iPhone, Droid, iPad, Droid tablet, or the web. So it will automatically do this. It will automatically print out all the tax questions that IRS requires. Like for entertainment, it will automatically show who, what, when, where, and how much. You can't get easier than that. You can do this in less than two minutes a day. Now, TaxBot also will store all your receipts. It has an integrated camera. So what you're going to do is you'll take a picture of your receipts, you click on save, TaxBot will automatically store all of that for you, which you can download to your web, to your, your hard drive, and then you can then use that and for your accountant. And everything can be, can be digitally uh, delivered by email. You can also put it on a memory stick. I mean, you can't get easier than that. It's very simple. You'll get the very secure storage. You know, TaxBot likes a BMW. There's more under the hood than it appears. All your data is fully encrypted and backed up with, 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 eight, with, with uh, buildings like the super banks use. And it's in multiple high security data centers in several different cities. So we take data security very seriously. You get powerful reporting for your accountant. So you'll be ready for the toughest IRS auditor. You get audit safe reports that look just like this, which summarize all your expenses by category, gives you all the receipts. You can actually see the receipt. Uh, as to what it is, so when you download it, you can send that to your accountant, and this will absolutely, will. Your, your, I promise you, your accountant will say this is the best records they have ever, ever seen. Now, also, there's something very interesting about TaxBot. TaxBot will link your bank or credit card. They're actually going to look for missed deductions, so you link your bank and credit card, and then it will check your charges. For on the on the bank or the credit card to see if it's in tax bond. If it's not there, we'll send you a message asking you if you want to edit. it. Why? This way you can have everything in one place. Now, in addition to the expense tracking, the auto tracking, the integrated camera, the digitally saved all receipts, you get me. You get a whole online education library. And we've had a number of reviewers say this is the best education library easily in the country. I mean, you get one idea, it'll save you thousands. We have over 40 videos, three to five minute videos on all kinds of topics from audit protection to all kinds of deductions to how to write off entertainment to how to make a business gift and write it off, you name it. We have 380 blogs on a wide variety of topics from not just tax, by the way, on all the financial scams that are going on in North America where I talk about the scams and how to avoid them. Uh, I have a blog on how to evaluate nursing homes for parents so you have a checklist of things going on. When should you take Social Security? I did a blog on that. Should you take it at 62, 66, 70? What should you do? I mean, I got all kinds of blogs that will save you thousands and thousands. You know, now, in addition, in the front of TaxBot, it actually lists how much you are saving in real time. That's how Amber knew she saved $350,000 in deductions. You actually see it in real time how much you're saving. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. I don't know how many of you have a downline, but you put your downline on this, which a lot of people are doing. When they start seeing 2000 3000 10000 20000 in deductions, they're never going to quit because this is what it costs them if they quit. I mean, this, this is exactly what it is. You know, when, before TaxBot, I looked like the person on the left. It was such a headache, I can't tell you, to do all this stuff and recreate it. But now, 
with TaxBot in less than two minutes a day, this is the way I and my wife looks. And I'm not exaggerating this. And by the way, TaxBot was rated in number one expense tracking software for 2013, 14, and we just got the rating in 2015 for in North America. Number one, it had a four and a half star rating in the App Store by customers. It was recommended by real estate association, almost every single real estate association in the country. We are recommended by the National Society of Accountants for all of their clients. We're recommended by New York Stock Exchange, billion dollar sales companies. I mean, there's a reason. Because tax bot is, if you want something easy, it doesn't get easier than this. Now, how much is tax bot? It's only $9.99 a month. And it's even cheaper if you want to do it by the year. It's $99.99 a year, which saves you two months. And, and, and by the way, it's not even this much. Why not? Because it's tax deductible. So it only costs you about $5.40 a month after taxes. I mean, it doesn't get cheaper than that. That's that 18 cents a day. I mean, that's, that's pretty cheap. To take advantage of this, which I don't see why you wouldn't, but to take advantage of it, click on the link on the screen, click on sign me up, and you'll get at this price. And again, it's fully tax deductible. In addition, for those of you who sign up within the next 24 hours or do it within 24 hours when you get the recording, you get our premium service. Now, we charge $259 for this. You will get it for free. Now, what's our premium service? You get to call and ask unlimited tax questions, seriously, with accountants, CPAs, enrolled agents, to ask them your questions. All right? I mean, that alone is worth it. Number two, you get our audit 911 service. So if you get audited, they'll advise you as to what to do. Number three, this is something that's really powerful. They will review your last year's business tax return for ways to save in the future. We've seen people save thousands by reviewing their last return. And all of these services are backed up by a million dollar insurance company. All of this for only $9.99 a month or $99.99 a year. I mean, you can't beat that. If you still have tax questions, we're going to be sending you a copy of our ebook, uh, tax, Targeted Tax Breaks for Your Home-Based Business. And by the way, uh, it is also guaranteed we want you to try it for 30 days. If you find that this doesn't put, here's the guarantee, it's like an insurance policy. 20 times what you paid, 20 times at $9.99 in new deductions, we'll give you back all your money. And by the way, you're going to average about 50 to 80 times, but we'll guarantee 20 times. What's that, 2,000% rate of return? I mean, you're not going to beat that with a stick. All right, bottom line is to get started. Click on the, the link on, on the screen, the Get Started button on the screen. Uh, it's only $9.99 a month, or if you want to do it to save two months, it's only $99.99 a year. And again, it's fully tax deductible. You know, the bottom line is do something. You know, if you want to use another expense tracking software and you want to have uh, a fireproof safe, hey, go for it. Okay, but do something. TaxBot is about as easy, for those of you that want something easy and quick, it's about as easy and quick as you're going to get. But, but do something, okay? So don't forget, click on that, that link and you get it at this price and you, it's fully tax deductible and you get the premium. You get to, get to call and ask unlimited tax questions and you'll get our ebook, Targeted Tax Breaks for Home-Based Business. All right, what I'd like to do is, um, hopefully I've convinced you, by the way, of the horrible mistake of overpaying your taxes, and I certainly apologize to anyone who doesn't get this, because I must have done a crappy job, because you're going to pay a lot more than others who will get it. All right, let me turn this over to Amber. We have about 10 minutes. If you have any questions, please type them in, and Amber will read me the question, and I'll be glad to try to answer your questions. Amber? All right, guys. Let me, let, let's, uh, let's hear your questions. Feel free to type them in the chat box, and I'll read them over to Sandy. All right, is there a coupon? Is clicking on the link is going to take us? Okay, let's see. The link is not working. Um, I'm going to post the link right here in the chat box, see if this works. Yes, let, it, let her post the link and see if that works. All right, guys. I just posted it, and I just went there myself, and it's showing the, the $9.99 and the $99, so we're good to go. Okay, so go to the link in the chat box, correct. And I did, I did see one question a, a while back while you were still talking that I okay. thought it was a good one. She said she lives in New York. She doesn't have a car. Is public transportation, is that tax rateable? All right. Good question. That's a really good question. All right. Public transportation works the same way as an automobile. You still have to keep a log, and not so much of the mileage, but of the business reason for the trip. If you're simply commuting to work, that wouldn't be deductible. If you're taking a train, however, to an opportunity meeting or a train to see a prospect, then it would be deductible. You need to log it into TaxBot to show the explanation, what, what, why you're doing this, to show the date, to show uh, the name of the person, and the reason. What, you know, that would be the explanation. 
Okay, and of course, how much you spent. But yes, that could be just as Perfect. deductible as a car. The only thing you don't need to do is mileage because you don't own the train. <laughs> All right, Angela says, if we give away a free gift, how do we keep track of that? That's a good question. Uh, product samples are 100% deductible, not 50%, 100%. So if you give away a free gift, you want a documented tax spot. The same thing I mentioned, the four W's and an H. Who? What was the name you gave it to? All right. What was uh, did you discuss? What was what did you do? It was for a business gift. It was for a product sample. Um, where did you do this? What did you did you do it over lunch or what was it? Was a restaurant? Who where? Um, it was uh, why you did it as a product sample. And finally, what's the name? How, how and what's how much? So you want to show how much. You want to show product sample. You want to show the date. Uh, you want to show that you did this at, and their name basically. And it's just the general W's. It'll all pop up as product samples on uh, TaxBot. I have a question that was sent to me in the, in the private chat, and I know the answer, but I'm going to have you answer it. She says, can you use this for more than one business? Oh, I'm it's so glad they asked this, I, and I forgot to tell, tell you all this. TaxBot works on up to three different businesses, three different cars simultaneously. So, for example, let's say you're a distributor, and your spouse is a distributor, and maybe you have your daughter as a distributor, all three of you can use TaxBot on one account and you all get separate reports for each of your businesses. And it can be used for three businesses and three cars simultaneously. You can also use it on different devices. So let's say you have an Apple and your spouse has a Droid, both of you can use TaxBot on the same account. You do not have to use the same, uh, you don't have to get separate accounts. You just download it and use the same password. All right. Um, one of them is, what if her office is in a large room that's also maybe like a family room? Can she deduct the whole room? That's a good question. Uh, no, the answer is probably no. You remember what I said, to claim a home office, you have to use an exclusive portion of a room for business. It doesn't have to be a whole room, but it has to be a separate, identifiable area that's used exclusively for that business. If you don't meet that exclusivity test, you won't be able to write off the home office. Now, what's interesting, though, is that the home office only relates to the real estate. I'll tell you something your accountant didn't tell you. It has nothing to do with the furniture. Furniture that you use for business is depreciable whether you claim a home office. So the desk, the file cabinet they use for business, the chair, the uh, computer, all of those things could be deductible even though you don't claim a home office deduction. Perfect. And I think a lot of these questions are just, can I write this stuff? Can I write that off? And I think once we play with the app, like I did, you, you're going to see all different categories. And like I've seen someone say, can I write off my samples? Yes. There's a category for, for that. Um, can you go over on that a little bit on, you know, just the different categories well, and how yeah, easy it is? Well, as I said, uh, TaxBot, all the categories are fully editable and customizable. So you can add a category if it's not there. Uh, if you forgot to put it into TaxBot, you can go back and put it in there. So all of that is available to you. Uh, again, product samples are deductible. You just have to not write the name of the product. What are you giving away? Uh, you want to write down the name of the person you gave it to. The date will automatically be, automatically be on your iPhone it'll, or Droid. It'll, it'll automatically there. You want to show the cost and you want to show that it's a product sample. Those five things and you're fine. Perfect. We have about five more minutes, um, so we're just going to do a few more questions. Crystal had a good one. I got it in a private chat. She says, I own one home, and I rent another one that I live in. Okay, so let me read this again. I own one home, and I rent another I live in for work. My home office is in my rental home. Can I take my homeowner deduction and my home office deduction? Good question. Answer yes. In some ways. Yes. What you can deduct is the interest in property taxes on your principal residence. And then, if you meet the rules, you can take part of the deduction for the rent as well as other kinds of maintenance expenses on the second property, such as um, uh, lawn mowing, uh, snow removal, repairs, insurance on the rental property. So you, the answer is you would get the interest in and taxes on the principal residence, and you can claim a home office on, part, on the rental property as well. All right, Ben asks, will the app be on Windows? I don't know if he means a Windows phone or the Windows on his computer. I know, I know exactly what he's talking about. He's talking about the Surface, the Microsoft Surface. Right now, the app works on the iPhone, the Droid, the iPad, the Droid tablet, and the web. Uh, it is not Windows. It's not on the Surface yet. We are going to be working on that. That's going to be one of our next to-do things. But right now, it's not on, on the Surface. You can use it in Windows. You can go on the web and use it, though. 
You can put all this stuff into uh, into go online and tax spot and the web. That you can do. It's just the the mileage tracker won't work, but the rest of it will. The expense, okay. the, uh, the integrated camera works. The um, all of those things work, and, and even the mileage the mileage track. Well, the mileage track won't work on the surface, but it will work on the uh, the iPad or Droid. Okay, and uh, we're gonna answer two more questions, guys. Caitlin says, "Can my six year old help me? Can I pay her?" So I guess the question that we're getting, what the what's the age that you can hire your children? Well, there's no set age per se. There is a case that allowed as young as seven to be hired and to be and there's a case on this. Uh, can I, can you hire someone at age six? Probably, if you can show that they legitimately do things for you, whether it's filing. Um, something that's legitimately done. If they can legitimately do things for your business, then you could probably hire them as young as age six. There, there is a case that shows as young as age seven can be hired. So I don't see any reason why you can't do it at age six as long as it's legitimate. You have timesheets showing what they did and so on. All right. And then um, this question, I think, I think I know this one. Charlotte says, what if a vehicle I use is in my husband's name? As long as you file a joint return, it doesn't matter. You can still write off part of the car, write off the repairs, write off the insurance, write off things like that to the extent it's used for business. It doesn't matter whose name is in as long as you file a joint return. If you file separately, then it's a problem. Then all okay, the and our last for, Perfect. And our last question. A lot of these are a lot of these are um you can kind of find these, and we're gonna you're gonna see them in in the ebook that you get. A lot of these questions are gonna be answered, and also in Sandy's book. Um, could you say the name of your book again, Sandy? All right. Uh, first of all, you're gonna be giving an ebook on uh, targeted tax breaks for your home based business. They're gonna be sent that uh, with this, but with with with, with, with tax spot. But I also have my own book, which I recommend, which is uh, really good for recruiting and in a lot more detail. By the way, it's called two books. It's called Lower Your Taxes Big Time. And the second book is called Achieve Financial Freedom Big Time. And both of those are available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and that old major bookstores. Perfect. Last question is one that I've been getting a lot of private messages about. And that is, um, we have women on here who are in the UK. We have women on here who are in Australia, women who are in Canada. Can they use this app? I would have actually talked about Canada. Canada definitely works in Canada. So for you Canadians, uh, you definitely can use the app in Canada and you Canadians get something else because a lot of my blogs are American blogs, not all of them, but a lot of them. You also get my entire tax advantage of home-based business in Canada. I have a Canadian version that you will get to as a download, which includes an eight hour it's, it's eight hours of, of, of audio which you download and you get my workbook, all part of it for Canada. Now for other countries, uh, TaxBot does work. The problem is I don't know which expenses are and are not deductible in your country. It does work in that country, though. The, the mileage tracker works because it's all done by satellite. The expense tracker works. The integrated camera works. Uh, the storage of the receipts work. All that works. It's just that the blogs may or may not apply to you, um, and some of the categories of expenses may or may not be deductible depending on your country. For example, Australia uh, doesn't ha has a limit on, it, on entertainment. The, so there's a little change there in Australia, but but yes, tax spot will work in anywhere in the world. We've actually tried it. We even went to Africa somewhere, and, and I don't know where they went, some some remote area, and it worked. So we've tried it in France. We've tried it in England. So it, yes, it'll work anywhere in the world. Perfect. And I want to let you guys know um, the the link. I put it as a sticky. So at the chat chat box, it's right in the top highlighted with yellow so it won't move it won't go away I know some people were scrolling looking for it it's right there at the top guys and that's that's about it we ended two minutes early thank you so much Sandy oh it is my pleasure and folks again bottom line is just do something it, 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 when you have as much as a 700 percent more likely chance of being selected for an audit doing nothing is really a bad move I mean for those of you who are not don't care about your business when you're just doing this socially you're right you probably don't need this but if you want, want to make money if you're serious about your business and you want to make a lot of money this becomes a product that's really a must Perfect. I'm going to post the link if you guys missed it at all. I'm going to post the link on Networking with Amber um, on our fan page. And that's about it. I hope you guys have a great night. And thank you again, Sandy, for taking your time and doing this for us. That it's is my pleasure. Let's make everybody's life less taxing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's make taxing fun. <laughs> or not getting taxed. We'll say that. Saving <laughs> money on our taxes. <laughs> Thanks, guys, so much.